Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Well, there's no doubt about it. Nintendo games rock. <laughs> movies based on Nintendo games blow. <laughs> Therefore, movies about Nintendo games blow rocks. <laughs> Thus, we enter the horrifying realms of The Wizard, Nintendo's biggest advertising fuck-up since Virtual Boy. The film, about a little boy who seems to be a prodigy with Nintendo games, literally teaches the lesson that Nintendo games bring families together. And as we all know, Nintendo games make us want to do nothing but destroy our adversaries. So the idea of Nintendo being kind of this 8-bit Buddha was pretty damn stupid. But still, they advertised this movie big, with stars like Fred Savage, Christian Slater, a shitload of video games, a Nintendo tournament face-off, and even a sneak peek at their latest groundbreaking game which wasn't yet released. When you're a kid growing up in the 80s and 90s, this looked unbelievable. I mean, every kid had to see this. So, why is this film a letdown of digital proportions? Let's take a look. First of all, let's take a look at this thrilling opening. Pretty exciting, huh? The Wizard! Champions of Nintendo duking it out in a one-on-one -on -one tournament of the Nintendo Master... My god, is he still walking?! Seriously, the opening of this film is nothing but a kid walking down a straight, narrow road. Fasten your seatbelts, we're in for a wild ride! Just sit down and have fun, damn it! Okay, so the strange little boy walking down the road is a kid named Jimmy, who just wants to go to California. California. California! He's returned back to his mother and jackass stepfather, where he continues to stare blankly out into space. Apparently, he's been traumatized by the death of his sister, and is seeking an outlet for all his pent-up emotions. I'd like to think that he's searching for a way to express himself. If only there was some kind of game council with two-player gameplay and 8-bit graphics that could allow him to express himself. But that kind of awe-inspiring magic only exists in the wildest realms of our imagination. Meanwhile, we cut to Jimmy's real father, played by Bo Bridges, who surprisingly was available. We also get to see Jimmy's brothers, Nick, played by Christian Slater, and Corey, played by Fred Savage. And I never really noticed it before, but Fred Savage is kind of weird. I mean, he doesn't really act like a kid at all. Everything he says sounds like it's being spoken by a high-pitched adult. Will you listen to me? Well, you want to see that happen? Huh? You want to see him put Jimmy in a hole? He kind of sounds like a male version of Dakota Fanning, and I don't think that's a good thing. You're getting awful personal, you know. So he sits in his room throwing darts at a map, because I guess that's what kids did before the internet, and decides he wants to take a little vacation. Where? California. No, no, no. California! California. So Corey decides he wants to run away from home and live in California. On his way there, he picks up his brother Jimmy from a mental home, where he literally just walks in the front door and steals him away. Where the fuck security?! I mean, there's no sign, no locked doors, no nothing! Did they just forget that kidnapping is illegal? What a top-notch establishment! I can't believe it! Once news of their runaway hits the parents, the mother and stepfather hire a professional runaway bringer-backer person named Mr. Putman. But Corey's father and brother are destined to get them back first, because Mr. Putman has the audacity to bring them back while being mildly rude. I make my money by bringing kids in and... I don't make it if someone else brings a kid in first. Uh... <laughs> we can't let him bring our children back alive and well with such hideously poor manners. To the shitmobile! <laughs> Meanwhile, Jimmy and Corey stop at a bus station where they discover that Jimmy has a special talent for getting high points on Double Dragon. You got 50,000 on Double Dragon? There, they come across Haley, a girl who also happens to be running away. It's his problem. Just shy. Shy a few bricks, I'd say. Just kicked ass on Double Dragon. Get out of here. Him? Yeah, he could wax your tail. No way. Want to bet? How much? Got a bus ticket. Could cash it in. What kids talk like this? I mean, seriously, they all talk like 1980s businessmen. I mean, who raised them? Donald Trump? Haley is shocked to find out that Jimmy does beat her at Double Dragon. A boy defeats a girl at a video game? Stop the presses! Your attitude sucks. Meanwhile, Corey's dad and brother continue to search for them after stealing the tree from Harold and Maude, and decide to stay in a hotel. There, Nick hooks up a Nintendo system, which seems to bring this father and son closer together. Doesn't take much intelligence to play that game, does it? You should know. Really close together. Wanna go grab a bite to eat? Really close together. 
just want to let you know that I'm glad that I'm here. Really uncomfortably, unnaturally, unchristianly close together. You remember those trips we used to take every year? That was great. Yeah. Sleeping with my father. Nintendo. It makes you gay. Now you're playing with incest. Can't even talk to each other. We're in your underwear. Meanwhile, Haley tells Corey and Jimmy about a Nintendo competition where they could win $50,000. And you'll never guess where it's being held. California. Right you are, you little oddball. So the three of them go from pit stop to pit stop, conning people out of money by making bets on video games. Which it seems are mostly played by a lot of middle-aged, stuck-up white businessmen. You know, the usual demographic. Now my brother over here, he could beat you. <laughs> go on! A child defeat me at the children's game? Oh, delightfully absurd! While gaining more and more money, one kid recommends Jimmy to the ultimate Nintendo master. He's good, but he never beat Lucas. Lucas? Oh, don't tell me you've never heard of Lucas. He's only the greatest Nintendo player that has ever roamed the universe. And uh, where might we find this Lucas? Within the twilight of the full moon, when the sky is dark, but the fire of the stars pierces through the night. That is where you will find Lucas. He's tough. tough. He's cool. But most of all, he's bad. bad. Nobody's better than Lucas. You the wizard? No, he is. Is he like a poster child for someone? Hey, Lucas, man, that was great. They say that he's less than a god, but more than a man. Lucas is awesome. Bikini gave me one. I have 97 of them. 97? No, all 97 of them? That's impossible! Dirty Harry, Scarface, The Terminator, Lucas. Why don't you just make yourself useful and give me a cold drink? But not only is Lucas a Nintendo master, he is also the keeper of a greater magic. What could be so important that he has to keep it in a briefcase? He's a madman! A madman! It's like watching Michelangelo carve his beloved David. But with a cloud! I love the power glove. It's so bad. Yeah, well, uh, just keep your power gloves off her, pal, huh? What?